Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video. So this is another item from Marcel in the Netherlands. Now I unpacked this one from the box and immediately what surprised me was the weight of this thing. As soon as you feel it, it just feels like a quality product. Now I know very little, well actually I know nothing about decent speakers and stuff like that, but I've Googled this one and this is a Bose SoundLink Mini 2 and it's come out a few years ago now but they're still expensive i still think they're well over 100 uk pounds to buy so i'm hoping the sound is going to be good i've watched a couple of reviews on youtube and they're going on about how the sound sounds amazing for something so small so sometimes when you look in the right light you can see uh i'm not going to be able to show you it in the camera but it looks like there's two speakers here and here and then a big one in the middle and then out the back it looks like there's a speaker here as well so the problem with this one is when I unpacked it, it well it was absolutely filthy so I haven't taken it apart or properly looked at it but I did just put a damp cloth around it because there was just like uh, just dust and dirt all over the thing still needs a good clean I've just done it to make it nicer to work on but when I turn it on there there's absolutely nothing happening so now I've had a look at the bottom and it says here it's really hard to see but it says here 5 volts so that's DC 1.6 amps and if you have a look at the side here there is a micro usb port now i've looked up the initial thing that marcel said was wrong with it and he says it doesn't charge so now uh, when i or it doesn't turn on something like that but look i've got this uh, charger here and this charger is 2.4 amps 2400 milliamps 5 volts so this should be ample for it you know if i was trying to charge it with something like 600 milliamps and maybe it would take ages but look this should charge it now i've had this plugged in for about an hour and it's not doing anything so maybe i need to leave it plugged in for a day or so i don't know but uh, it's not the charger because look this one here is a huddle charger from a tablet and this one here is two amps and if i plug this one in you can see the same thing happens again yeah and i just had a very quick look wondering how to take it apart now i haven't taken it apart but look when i peeled this off can you see that screws are missing i haven't peeled it off any more than that because i wanted to save it for the video but if you have a look there all the screws are missing so it's definitely been apart before but uh, before we take it fully apart let's just make sure it doesn't need a reset because i typed into google flashing red light and a, uh, a lot of people said that it just needs to be reset or it could be a software issue so, well, I mean, it's, it's a battery issue, but it could be that it's in, there's different modes. There's something called a SHIP mode, S-H-I-P, and I believe that is to save the battery from depleting completely or something along those lines there. So let's just try what, basically what I've uh, read on the internet. So I'm going to try to do the SHIP mode to begin with, and uh, I need to hold down this multifunction button in the middle for 10 seconds while the cable's plugged into it and then I need to unplug that cable and then let go of the button. So let's do that now and see what happens. One and two and ten. Okay, can you see that's changed now? That's changed there. Excellent. That's done something different. So now unplug that there and let go. Now let's see if it turns on. No, but that could be because the battery's uh, drained. So now let's plug it in and see what it does. Right, so it's doing the same thing. But it did do something different there, didn't it? Well, I'm going to do that process one more time. I'm just going to zoom in a bit closely on the, closer on the buttons. I'll just fast forward through it all. No, still not doing it. I'm going to try it again, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to let go of the button before taking it out here and see if that makes any difference. You can see it's changed colour now, so let's let go. No, it just goes back to flashing red again. Right, so the next thing I'm going to try is to uh, reset it completely. So you've got to hold down the power button for 10 seconds. Let's try that. Right, well that hasn't made any difference at all. Let's try it without the, uh, the cable plugged in. I'm wondering if it's just been left for a long time and now the battery's completely depleted and it might not be, uh, it might not be safe, you know, the battery might think it's unsafe to charge up. 
slightly worrying that's already been taken apart. Right, well you can see nothing's happening there, so I don't think it's going to be an easy fix, which is fair enough, because if somebody spent £140 on a product, they're probably going to check on the internet when it goes faulty to see what's wrong with it. If it was a £5 or £10 product, they would just replace it. But, uh, yeah, when people spend that amount of money, they normally put a little bit of work into it, hence the reason why it has been taken apart. Real shame that they didn't put the screws back in, which is, uh, which is worrying, really. Uh, right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug it into my computer and see if it recognises it, because then you can do like a, a firmware update on it. Right, so we've got a micro USB cable. This is one that's got four wires in it, so it's doing the data as well as the power, not just charging. Uh, plug it into there. Still got the flashing red light there because it's charging. Okay, it's saying setting up device, Bose Soundlink Mini 2. So it looks like it has recognised it. So that's, uh, that's good. Now I've been watching this Bose Soundlink Mini 2 uh, web uh, YouTube uh, video from actual Bose product support. And we've got to go to btu.bose.com. So, so take a moment to download and install the Bose Updater. With this app, you can easily update your product and find out when new software updates are available. Right, okay, well, it didn't show that on the, uh, on the video. Let me just go to launch and see what happens. No, okay, so I do have to, uh, I do have to download it. I'll just fast forward through all this. Right, okay, it does say here that there is an update for my product. So uh, it does recognise it then, doesn't it? So I'm going to put update now, version 1.1.4. It says make sure the battery is charged. Well, it's not. Do not disconnect during the update. If your product is not updating, contact us. Right, let's hit update now. And let's see if it goes through. Right, interestingly now, it's halfway through the update, 58%, but the little light's gone off on the uh, the speaker, and the USB here made the disconnection, uh, disconnection sounds. So it's not flashing red anymore. That might be a good thing. Right, it made a little noise there. Oh, look, and it's gone to amber charger now. Yes! It made, like, the boop-boop noise which I presume happens when you plug in a charger, we're now at 76%. Look, charging amber. It's done it again. Right, this is promising. Made a weird noise there again. Slightly worrying. Is that just a? Oh, that's just a timeout. My laptop. Excellent. It's gone to green. One hundred percent. Your product is now up to date. So I presume it means I can disconnect it. I'm hoping. Right. So it is uh, flashing amber now. So let's uh, unplug that. And now let's plug in the charger and see what it does now. Excellent. Look. So it's charging up now. So although I had it plugged in for around an hour before, I suppose with the flashing red light it wasn't actually accepting a charge. So I'm, I'm presuming there's not going to be enough charge in it yet to do anything. Let's see. Yes, and that's flashing the Bluetooth now. Excellent. Right, what I'm going to do is, let's leave this plugged in for a bit. And now I'm going to come back to it, and we'll try and uh, I'll try and connect it up to my phone, and maybe play a bit of a my mate Vince thing, so I don't get copyright. And then maybe I'll do an aux thing to uh, the CD that I fixed yesterday, the CD Walkman, the Discman, and then we'll put a bit of uh, royalty-free classical music on there, and uh, see if that's working. And then even if it is working, I still want to just take off the bottom, just to see what it looks like on the inside, just to see how it's made, see where the battery is and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, I'll only do that if it's coming out easy. I don't want to break it in the process. 
fantastic this is looking really promising Right, it's been about 15 minutes later now, getting kind of bored waiting for this to uh, charge up. It can take up to four hours. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to try to reset it now because remember this is going to be paired up to the previous person's phone and uh, you know the language settings and stuff. So let me reset it and then we'll see. Maybe it will be in Dutch. If so, I believe you can just scroll through the different languages. I'm reading the instructions on this. It looks pretty clever and I suppose that's why it warrants the price tag. So it's not just going to be a good set. Sound. It does a lot of features. It apparently speaks to you in whatever language. It does numerous different languages, like it tells you how much battery life is left and when it's connecting to Bluetooth and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this, and now I'm going to uh, right. I'm going to turn it on. Right. So it didn't speak to me there. Let me uh, hold down these two buttons. Spark on. There you go. Did you hear that? That was in a different language. So now, hold on. Well, I'll tell you what, let's reset it and then I can worry about the, the languages. So I'm going to hold down this for 10 seconds. So I'm presuming that's Dutch. Because it has come from the Netherlands. Right. English. To it select English. Press and hold the multifunction button. Ready to pair. Excellent. So I've reset it now and now it's ready to pair. So let me pair it up with my phone. Come up at the bottom there, available devices. You see there, Bose Mini 2 sound link. So I'm going to tap on that and it says pairing. And now it says uh, pairing request. So I'm going to go OK. Connected to Galaxy S10. Excellent. So it's connected now. So hold on. Do I allow it to access contacts? So apparently with this, uh, not that I would ever use it in this instance here, but you can actually make you uh, do phone calls. So if you get a phone through on your, if you get a call through on your phone, I think you can answer it on here by hitting the multifunction button. So this must have a microphone built into it as well. So, but the thing is, I'm thinking, would anybody actually really use that in real life? Probably not. But uh, yeah, I suppose it's a bit of a novelty. Right, let's go to YouTube now and let's see if one of my videos is playing through it. There we go. Look. Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince. And you can oh, see when I'm going here, it's going up here. Look, that person up here on your PlayStation 4. That's clever, isn't it? And the reason this video is different than the one I did about a year or so ago is because in this version here, Results. I'm going to show so you it's how working. You can do the setup to include Copilot. And there you go, and you can pause it by hitting the multi-function button and unpause it. Copilot is where you use two controllers as one. That's quite clever, isn't it? Uh, and I think you can skip by hitting this twice, and then I suppose it will go to the next. Uh, will it go to the next YouTube one? Yes, it will. The Bluetooth's definitely working. Now let's plug in an aux and see if that's working. Then we can take this thing apart. Right, so here we have the CD player that I fixed yesterday. Let's plug it in here. Let's come up with forks there. I don't know if you heard that or not, but it's got a, like a zzz, zzz, and that's because it's not screwed in here. So you know when you put it up loud, have a listen now. Yeah. So 100% we have to screw that in. Do you know what? It does go very loud. Apparently you're supposed to put it near a wall, not against a wall, but near a wall so the bass can bounce off the wall back into the room. So let's just put it somewhere else just to see what it sounds like. I mean, this is kind of irrelevant for the video because it's, uh, it's recording on my microphone on here and also then it's going to go through YouTube and play through your speaker. So you're not going to hear anything like I'm hearing. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, my ears are not good to listen out. I'm a bit, I'm not tone deaf, but I'm not, I'm not good with, with sounds and stuff like that. But to me, that sounds pretty clear. Right, here we have my little shrine of fixes. So uh, let's play it now. So that's relatively close to the wall. Oh, 
path that you've got to unpause it from here. Yeah, so you've still got to do it from here. So look, it doesn't want to skip forward on the CD player, but it does on the phone. So maybe it needs to have something newer attached to it in order to do that. Right, to me now, there definitely seems to be a wide range of sounds coming from it. So for example, when I use this little echo there, which I'm more than happy with, the bass doesn't seem to sound the same as this. This really does seem to be reverberating, but 100% you have to hold it down to stop that annoying noise. So it looks like we also have to do a physical fix as well as the software thing. So that's great. I've just got to try to find some sort of screws to fit in it. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's take it apart, see the inside of it, and then see if we can work out what screws fit it or not. All right, so let's uh, peel off the bottom bit. Make sure it's turned off. Battery, 60%. Okay. Connected to Galaxy S10. So we've got battery at 60%. So now let's turn it off. I presume that's off. Right, now is the whole thing just going to pop out from here? This is interesting. How do we? Uh... Oh, okay, right. Uh... Mm, do I want to mess with this? This looks like it's all soldered in there, doesn't it? Maybe you have to take off the grill and everything like that, which I don't want to get involved in because remember, this is working. Is that soldered in there or not? Uh, right, I know this is, I'm chickening out here, but it is an expensive device and the problem is, is that we just need to find screws to go in here. You know, I have fixed it, it's uh, a software issue. What I do want to know is, what's the difference between software and firmware? So, often when I'm talking about things, I will say like a firmware update, but then is it not a software update? Do they mean the same thing? Is software and firmware the same thing or not? I've never Googled it, maybe the answer is really simple, maybe they are the same thing. If you know, just pop it down in the uh, comments and when I read through, then I'll know for next time. Uh, Right, but you can see, let's just have a little zoom in and have a look, see what there is. So it looks like we've got one big speaker back here. So would that be like the subwoofer? Is that the back of it? Hold on. So the, yeah, that's the back side of it here. So this is the bit that you need to put against or near a wall for it to bounce off. And then we have a uh, another speaker here. And then we've got another one in that corner down there. And also corner down there as well. Uh, I really actually don't know. I think what you'd have to do is, see it all looks like one solid piece of aluminium all the way around, isn't it? I think what you'd have to do is you've probably got to take off maybe this plastic, or this is rubber, you probably have to take off this rubber thing here and maybe then this grills pop out and then there's screws and stuff to give access. So maybe all the components are small enough to fit in through here or maybe the uh, you know they screw into this bit here, but either way, it doesn't really look. I don't think it's going to be an easy one to take apart, and especially that it's working. I think it would be silly of me to uh, to take it apart. But it does look nicely made. If you look at the connector there that joins the two boards together, let me get the torch. Do the connector in there joining that board and that board. So it does look like it's nicely designed, doesn't it? So I don't know, with something like this, do you get what you pay for, or is it overpriced? Are you paying for the name? I mean, it's expensive, but it does appear to be very well made, and just from the little bit of listening that I did, it does appear that, uh, that the sound quality sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty impressive. 
So bearing in mind, what am I comparing it to? I'm con comparing it to like a Bluetooth Chinese speaker that I got for you know 20 something pounds. So obviously you would expect it to be better. But it's kind of weird, I go through different phases. I sort of think that a lot of the time when you buy something expensive, you're getting ripped off. But then I see certain things like this, and you know the uh, Bang & Olufsen uh, tape cassette thing? I know I, I didn't pay a lot for it, I paid 50 pound. But you look at it and then you sort of think, well, hold on, this does sound better. And that other B&O was made better. So uh, I think in a lot of cases, you do get what you pay for, and then when you, pay more for something you don't always get ripped off you know sometimes it looks like they are uh, the equipment does look like it's easy to use and more importantly it looks like it's made better in which case then you don't have to replace it every few years it can still probably you know this is still probably going to be working well as long as bluetooth is still around in 15 years time i'm sure people will still be happy with the sound then all right let's find some little screws to fit into these looks like they're machine screws so let's see what I've got. That was an epic. I've been looking into this now for the screws for over one hour, but eventually I got there. So to begin with, I thought to myself, what's going to be small and a machine screw? Because most of the screws here, you can see like wood screws that make their own thread as they go in. And I've seen this little chocolate block here and that gave me the idea. The problem is the screws for this are incredibly small. So then I thought, okay, well, what's similar to that? So then I started looking into telephone sockets and they were still too big, but eventually I got myself a telecom block terminal socket here. I've still got loads of these left over from uh, when I used to sell telecom products. And these screws here are just about perfect. They look to be uh, a tiny little bit on the big side. Remember, I'm screwing into aluminium, so I suppose even though it's slightly big, they're gonna kind of make their own thread on the way in. So it's not ideal, they're almost perfect, but not quite perfect. But that's them there, so let's pop them in here, and hopefully that will get rid of the vibration. Okay, they look like they've pulled it in. Can you see now? It looks like uh, looks like it's all the way in, but I won't know until I put it back together. So let's put this back on, and I'm just going to give it a quick clean with my Dettol wet wipe here. I'm down to my last one. I'm empty now. These have become like gold dust in the UK because of all the scares of the uh, coronavirus, which is which is obviously starting to kick off big time now and it's uh, very scary when you watch the news and hear everything about it. To begin with I thought it was just hype because I know when it comes to the news that media, uh, especially online, well any sort of media, that's their business. They have to make stories so even if they can cling on to something small they make a story out of it because that's how they make their money. Uh, but now looking at this, the way the stock markets are crashing and the fact that world you know worldwide countries are going into lockdown well that's not in their interest to do that is it because they're going to lose a huge amount of money so it makes me think that actually this isn't just media hype it is uh, it does look like it's going to be unfortunately quite a serious thing that's going to do the rounds but hopefully maybe as the weather warms up maybe like uh, most flus and stuff hopefully it might kind of die off towards the summer but uh, yeah I don't know think we're going to be in for scary times ahead and even if the coronavirus doesn't kick off the very fact that people are emptying the shelves off like uh, products and stuff like that means it's going to be hardship for a lot of people and also businesses as well because let's say the travel industry now even if nothing really kicks off with this coronavirus uh, you know big big time obviously it's kicked off already but it's uh, lots of businesses can go under through the fear of people not booking things and not doing things, not visiting places. So uh, it's a real tough one, you know, it's a real tough one to decide what to do. Do you kind of just try to isolate or do you just go on as normal? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's impossible to know, isn't it? Look at that, it has come out absolutely beautiful. I can't get across in the video how nicely weighted this is. It feels just absolute quality. It really does. 
I'm well happy with how that's come out. That's come out perfect. And as well as that, it seems to be a current product and it actually seems, because a lot of the times I fix things that are worthless, but this does actually have a value to it. So now let's uh, connect up the CD player again. Excellent, that annoying vibration's gone now because the screws has pulled the bottom bit into the bodywork, so there's nothing to vibrate because it's all nice and solid now. So, uh... I can't tell you how good that sounds. I know it's not gonna come across in the video. Honestly, the range, I don't know if that's the right word, the range of sounds is amazing. I mean, even in my car, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't heard sound this good. It, it's, uh, there seems to be a massive difference between the lows and the highs. I am not into my audio stuff at all, and I would never spend this amount of money on a speaker, you know, like over 100 pounds for something so small. But oh my God, it really does honestly sound amazing to my untrained ears anyway. <laughs> I can honestly say I love it and I actually think it probably is actually worth the money and uh, I think when I show this to my daughter I think she's going to love this because she can connect up her phone via Spotify and then have this in her room and it really does pump out a lot of sounds but again not too much sound that it would annoy the neighbours. I, I think it's brilliant. I'm so happy with this one here. Thank you Marcel for sending that over. I would have never dreamed of buying one of these off eBay to repair. And uh, I think for a change it was an interesting one because it was a software or stroke firmware issue, which is, which is interesting. You can see it wasn't working at all. Obviously the previous person went to the bother of undoing the screws to see if they could find out what was wrong with it. And all it was was that it just needed an update for whatever reason, They're really strange. So if you've got one of these at home or if you've bought one off eBay and it has the flashing red light, hold down this middle button, the multifunction button for 10 seconds and then unplug the power cable, see if that fixes it. If not, if you've got any life in it at all, hold down the power button to reset it. Obviously you'll then have to repair it to your uh, equipment and also change the language to your personal settings and stuff that you want. But if that doesn't work, plug it into your computer, download what you uh, the little bit of uh, software that you've seen me do earlier, and as you can see here, it's now working absolutely perfectly. So it was a nice change to have something software related rather than the hardware, rather than, for example, a, a broken wire or something like that. I think it's nice. And then just the added thing of the vibration here, just to find the screws, did mean it was a slight physical fix as well. I am so, 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 happy with that. I really am. Excellent. Right. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.